This chapter introduces the economic model of demand and supply, one of the most powerful models in all of economics. The discussion here begins with examining how demand and supply determine the price and the quantity sold in the markets of goods and services, and how changes in demand and supply lead to changes in prices and quantities. The demand schedule shows that as a price rises, quantity demanded decreases, and vice versa. These points are then graphed, and the line connecting them is the demand curve D. The downward slope of the demand curve again illustrates the law of demand, the inverse relationship between prices and quantity demanded. It is important to note that demand in general refers to the entire demand schedule and curve, and each individual point on the curve is referred to as quantity demanded. The supply schedule is the table that shows quantity supplied of gasoline at each price. As price rises, quantity supplied also increases, and vice versa. The supply curve S is created by graphing the points from the supply schedule and then connecting them. The upward slope of the supply curve illustrates the law of supply, that a higher price leads to a higher quantity supplied and vice versa. Just like demand, it is important to note that in general, supply refers to the entire supply schedule and curve, and that quantity supplied refers to the individual points on the curve or individual price and quantity sets in the schedule. The demand curve D and the supply curve S intersect at the equilibrium point E, with a price of $1.40 and a quantity of 600. The equilibrium is the only price where quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. The price and quantity that make up the equilibrium point are referred to as equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. At a price above equilibrium, like $1.80, quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded, so there is excess supply. At a price below the equilibrium, such as $1.20, Quantity demanded exceeds quantity supplied, so there is excess demand. Increased demand means that at every given price, the quantity demanded is higher, so that the demand curve shifts to the right from DO to D1. Decreased demand means that at every given price, the quantity demanded is lower so that the demand curve shifts to the left from DO to D2. The demand curve can be used to identify how much consumers would buy at any given price. If the price changes, then the quantity demanded changes but remains on the same demand curve. This simplified model illustrates an important assumption made in economic theories and models, ceteris paribus. This Latin phrase means other things being equal. In the supply and demand models, we hold all other variables equal and look only at the factor of price. If a factor other than price has an impact on demand, then we can look beyond the current demand schedule and curve. If we expand our view to other factors that may change or shift demand, we can see their effect. For example, Let's look at the changes that consumer incomes have on demand. With an increase in income, consumers will purchase larger quantities, pushing demand to the right. Here are two lists of factors that cause either an increase or decrease in demand. The factors on the left cause a decrease in demand and shift it to the left. The factors on the right cause an increase in demand and shift it to the right. These factors include consumer tastes, population change, income change, substitutes, complements, and future expectation. Decreased supply means that at every given price, the quantity supplied is lower so that the supply curve shifts to the left from SO to S1. 
Increased supply means that at every given price, the quantity supplied is higher, so that the supply curve shifts to the right from SO to S2. The supply curve can be used to show the minimum price a firm will accept to produce a given quantity of output. The concept of caterus paribus applies to the supply curve as well. This means that holding all other factors equal, a change in price only impacts the quantity supplied along the same supply curve. The cost of production and the desired profit equal the price a firm will set for a product. If we change other factors related to the firm's cost of production or the desired profit, then the supply curve shifts. Because the cost of production and the desired profit equal the price a firm will set for a product, if the cost of production increases, the price for the product will also need to increase to maintain the desired profit level of the firm. When the cost of production increases, the supply curve shifts upwardly to a new price level in order to maintain the desired profit of the firm. Here are two lists of factors that either increase or decrease supply. These factors include natural conditions, input prices, technology, and taxes and regulation. As factors shift supply and demand, we need to understand the effect on equilibrium price and quantity. Things can get pretty complicated, especially if both demand and supply are shifting at the same time. To keep things straight, there are four basic steps that we can follow to help us. Step number one, we need to draw the original demand and supply curves. This includes determining the original equilibrium. The original equilibrium is the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. Step number two, we need to determine if the factor is affecting supply or demand. In other words, which does the factor shift? Step number three, we need to determine which way the factor is shifting, supply or demand. To the right or to the left, up or down. Step number four, we need to identify the new equilibrium. This includes the new equi equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Let's take a look at a shift in the supply of tuna caused by the factor of weather. In this case, the weather was good, so that means it is easier to catch more tuna and the cost of production goes down with the desired profit remaining the same. The overall price decreases for every quantity supplied of tuna. Let's go through the four steps to determine the change in equilibrium price and quantity of tuna. First, we determine the original demand and supply curves. In this case, that is SO and DO, which tells us that the original equilibrium EO. The original equilibrium price is $3.25 and the original equilibrium quantity is 250. Next, we need to determine if the good weather is affecting supply or demand. Which does the factor shift? In this case, the factor is shifting supply. Now that we know that supply is being shifted, we need to determine in which way the supply is being shifted. In this case, the supply is being shifted to the right, or it's an increase in supply. After we determine this, we need to determine the new equilibrium, E1. In this case, the new equilibrium price is $2.50, which is a decrease from the old or original equilibrium price, and equilibrium quantity is 550, which is an increase from the original equilibrium quantity of 250. Now let's look at a shift in demand. This demand shift is the result of a change in taste from print news sources to digital news sources, resulting in a leftward shift in demand for print news sources. If you go through the four-step process, you see that the, the result is a decrease in both equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Here we can see two forces 
working at the same time, shifting the supply of U.S. Post Office services and the demand for those services. A cost of living increase is the force shifting the supply from SO to S1, and a change in the preference of consumers for email instead of tradi traditional mail is shifting the demand curve from DO to D1. As we combine the shift in supply and the shift in demand together in the same graph, we can see how the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity change from EO, the original equilibrium, to E1 and E2, representing the equilibrium shifts to supply and demand respectfully. And then finally, E3, representing the new equilibrium resulting from the combined shifts. One important note, a shift in one curve never causes a shift in the other curve. Rather, a shift in one curve causes a movement along the second curve. In this graph, a shift in supply does cause a resulting change in quantity demanded along the demand curve. Unless a separate force is simultaneously forcing the demand curve to shift, then forces shifting supply should be limited to supply curve shifts only. As a rule, a market's demand and supply will come to a natural equilibrium, unless outside forces like government regulation do not allow it. Governments often use price controls to attempt to control markets. A price ceiling is a price control placed on a market that does not allow the price to rise above it, much like a balloon is stopped from rising when it reaches the ceiling. A price floor is a price control placed on a market that does not allow the price to drop below it, just like the floor in a house keeps you from falling into the basement. In the economic model of supply and demand, a price ceiling looks like this. The impact of a ceiling can be seen as we shift the demand in this model. The original intersection of demand and supply occurs at EO. If demand shifts from DO to D1, the new equilibrium would be at E1, unless a price ceiling prevents the price from rising. If the price is not permitted to rise, the quantity supplied remains at 15,000. However, after the change in demand, the quantity demanded rises to 19,000, resulting in a shortage. This model shows the impact of a price floor on a market. The intersection of demand D and supply S would be at the equilibrium point EO. However, a price floor set at PF holds the price above EO and prevents it from falling. The result of the price floor is that the quantity supplied QS exceeds the quantity demanded QD. There is excess supply, also called a surplus. The supply and demand models show us how efficient a market can be. There are benefits or surpluses to be realized by both consumers and producers. The somewhat triangular area labeled by F shows the area of consumer surplus, which shows that the equilibrium price in the market was less than what many of the consumers were willing to pay. Point J on the demand curve shows that even at the price of $90, consumers would have been willing to purchase a quantity of 20 million. The somewhat triangular area labeled by G shows the area of producer surplus, which shows that the equilibrium price received in the market was more than what many of the producers were willing to accept for their products. For example, point K on the supply curve shows that at a price of $45, firms would have still been willing to supply a quantity of 14 million. In markets, that are regulated by price controls, some of the efficiency is lost. We see this impact of regulation in this example. The model on the left shows that the original equilibrium price is $600,
with a quantity of 20,000. Consumer surplus is T plus U, and producer surplus is V plus W plus X. A price ceiling is imposed at $400, so firms in the market now produce only a quantity of 15,000. As a result, the new consumer surplus is T plus V, while the new producer surplus is only X. U and W represent what economists term deadweight loss, caused by an inefficiency in the market. The model on the right shows the original equilibrium at $8 and quantity of $1,800. Consumer surplus is G plus H plus J and producer surplus is I plus K. A price floor is imposed at $12, which means that quantity demanded falls to $1,400. As a result, the new consumer surplus is G and the new producer, producer surplus is H plus I. In this case, J and K represent the deadweight loss of inefficiency in the market.